Alright, time for an Echo game. I will be playing against a Nocturne here, which should be perfectly fine for me. That's kind of what we want to see, because we know Nocturne doesn't invade us. That's the most prominent thing you have to worry about, is getting invaded early on. If you can get through your first full clear without getting any type of invade on you, that is ideal. So that is really nice here. I will never go for an invade, because uh, it will only cripple you as a jungler. You can get like a kill, maybe. But if you die, if you are going to be late for your jungle clear, if you don't get the ward your camps and get cheesed because of it, that is all stuff that can just insta lose you the game as a jungler or put you very, very far behind. So I actually never go with invades. Like maybe if I'm playing like Elise or just something aggressive, right, that doesn't really have or need full clears. That is a different story. But in this case, like I need a full clear on this champion. I'm also the only AP on my team, so I'm gonna have to do well, basically. I'm gonna have to be that consistent factor. Otherwise, they can just stack armor and our team will be in deep trouble. So, yeah. I'm gonna start with W here, because of your W passive. This is gonna get quite low and then you're gonna... Your W passive is going to kick in on this camp and you're gonna do more damage with your hits. Which is gonna clear the camp faster. As you can see here, the extra numbers kicking in is my W passive. Now for Echo, you wanna smite your camps early. To get this W passive faster. So that's what I'm doing with Grompir. We're smiting it straight up. It's right here. My W passive will kick in. And it's going to be fine. There we go. All we're doing here is we're going to go for a full clear. We need the consistency of levels. Echo's early game is very weak. So we're going to have to get this full clear done. Get the levels in. Just focus the big wolf. Next two kills the small ones. Gonna kite this towards the raptors now. There we go. Now, if you're wondering why am I running Conqueror, uh, Conqueror is at this situation the best rune. Also, especially after the durability patch, the uh, one shot build with like first strike and dark harvest became worse in general, like just in general. But Conqueror, like Natchez to the Rift Maker, is insanely good on Echo. Echo is like the only vamp got removed out of runes, the Ravenous Hunter, which was Echo's best friend because it fully scales off of your passive. It doesn't, it's not hampered, so you're gonna get full healing from passive. So every passive it does a lot, and the only vamp from Rift Maker will give you that back essentially. So you're gonna have a ton more sustain. So unless the enemy team is extremely squishy, like we're talking really squishy, um, you should go for Conqueror with. Rift, like with Rift Maker. If they are very, very squishy though, like we're talking like full on squish mode, uh, like let's say it was a Quintal there instead of the Aatrox for the enemy team, I would have gone for like a first strike setup. Because at that point, like you can just afford to go for burst mode. And the build would change a bit from like, rushing Nashers to going Rift Maker, it would change to like going um, into Rocket Belt instead. But yeah, we're still rushing Nashers here for sure. Do this. The reason we rush Nashers on Echo, by the way, is because for jungle Echo specifically, we're not talking about mid lane Echo here, because for mid lane Echo, Nashers is worse. But for jungle Echo, Echo specifically, it gives you clear speed, really good clear speed, objective control, because you're going to get more hits in on like a dragon with your W and stuff like that. And also it just gives high flat AP. So it's really for clear speed and also dragon control, objective control in general. That's why we do this. So it's a hundred flat AP, which is obviously more than like the uh, Hextack Rocket Bell or Rift Maker would be. Plus, it gives you the jungle clear better than the other two items do. Pike's now bot lane. I could look for a bot gank here potentially. It just depends. I kind of need to wait for Pike a little bit if I do want to go for such a play. Again, I'm just gonna smite early here. Okay, Noxian is probably running bolts here. The wave is gonna. This Jin is like the the Jin is getting away with this. Honestly, I would expect the enemy team to play more aggressive there into him. Wow, I hate Ash so much. That's kind of rough, honestly. Nice. That was actually a clean Pike engage. Initially, that wasn't gonna work, but the Pike actually played that really well, and I got my stun on the edge there. What we like to see. Well, I mean, did not expect the Ash to do that. Probably should have been there, maybe. I don't know. Would expect it to just be under turret. 
Is this like a mid to high platinum game, by the way? Yeah. For those of you wondering. I mean, we take those. Right now, I'm just going to keep up the consistency of my clear because it's all respawned up towards top side. So I just want to get this done. I need to not fall behind on this. You need levels on Echo, so this is very important. There we go. Let's go for Crux, take a recall. We could potentially, after that, look for this dragon. Um, Nocturne is there. Top Scuttle should respawn somewhat soon. I could go for it, potentially. But there's something we know about bot lane now, right? We know they don't have summoners, so that means getting a gank off on bot lane would be pretty doable. I think I'm just going to insta recall. And then we go for the bot play. Like no flash stop isn't really a thing for me to play around there. We get the AP first doing this, by the way. We don't get the attack speed. The AP scales better with your kit. It's going to give you more clear speed than the attack speed would. On this champion specifically. On other champions, it's of course different. But that's why we are rushing the AP components of Nashus before we take the attack speed. I will do blue first, that should hit me 6. And then I can go from blue to from blue to bolt mine. Oh, my pipe just backed. That's not ideal. I guess I could stall do Gromp here. I don't necessarily want to make a play without my support there. He's gonna be a little late, so. There we go. I will run bolt now. Uh, that is not bot lane, because we would see something otherwise. That is in fact top lane. Nice. I will just ult here. Oh god. That is an auction roam and a half. That's not good for us. Alright. Um, I was initially take they have double exhaust. I was not I did not think about that, I'm not gonna lie. But I was initially trying to just dive to get turret aggro. Uh, this wave is fine, I don't touch this. But the auction made a good rotation there. I wanted to just take turret aggro. Like on Echo, you want to just try to take the turret aggro and then play around that that way. Please don't take my camps. Back a few Yone. I need those. I do not want to be falling behind on XP at all. That would be rough. Alright. Pretty good roam from Arkshan Arkshan there. Definitely saved their bot lane quite a bit. And his bot lane. His ult should be up somewhat soon. At least I now don't have to worry about getting invaded here, which is good. Could look for a potential top play here. Could look to do Rift Herald as well. I ult still on cooldown for like 15 seconds, so at this moment in time I would rather just finish my jungle clear off. For now. That's it. Yeah, it's gotta be bot lane or mid lane. I have no idea. Oh, there is Aatrox. That yeah, was in fact bot lane. Interesting. This guy is playing so safe. How the hell does he know? They do this. Good. Nice. Try to walk with him in that situation. I have no idea where Akshon is. He just killed mid. That's Dragon Dead, that's to be expected. I just want to get some turret plates here if I can. Good situation for me there on Aatrox. 
He's obviously stacking armor like at the moment, like with these boots and stuff, so I do quite a bit of damage to him. Be able to get three, maybe four turret blades here. Gonna give her that instant wave clear. Job. Good. We're gonna get Nashers here. I do not go for Herald here. That's way too risky. I have way too much gold for that. It's not worth it. I will go for my bot side camps right now. And then I could potentially look for a bot player. I do think they already get it. That's a good ignite. That's unfortunately not Pike level 6 yet. There it is on the second kill. But that's good for my bot lane. Like they're doing well. Which should be expected since I did help them a little bit for that early stage of the game, right? Definitely did not make the life easy for the enemy bot lane, so that's good. My bot lane is playing well off that. That's going to be a Nocturnal on bot, so we're going to run there. Do not know if he gets to survive here, but... I barely got there in time. I'll just take a wave. Make sure that this... This doesn't go into turret here. Just clear this, no problem. Good. This way I can just hold the wave without getting any turret plates or without giving any turret plates to the enemy team. Never had luck. Never we know the only option for that auction to be is go bot lane, so we just rotate to it, see if we can maybe help with a fight was possible in this situation. Two smite charges here, so we smite early. Now in this game I could technically go defensive boots, but I don't think I have to. Actually, maybe mercs are actually useful. I have quite a bit of annoying CC, I would say. You gotta love it, man. Like, with Nashers, you can just ram him down with a bunch of auto attacks, and he just takes so much damage. And then, well, of course, you still have the ability to ult away. Why I do that play, by the way, is because I know he doesn't have any mana. You saw his mana bar. He had nothing. So there was nothing for him to counterplay me with. So it makes things very, very easy right there. Oh. Right, let's see. Run away from that fear real quick. Got about half his HP. I mean... Okay, Yone. Or don't. Whatever. I, it just sucks for me right there. Like, maybe I went too aggressive, sure. But he completely just, like, ran away from me instead of, like, kind of walking with me out of the jungle. Uh, yeah. I mean... I could just play less aggressive, for sure. But for him, like, he could have saved me there, I think. Because the Akshan would have been highly damaged if Yone was right next to me. Because the Akshan can't do damage to both of us at the same time. That's what I'm saying. So if he is, like, kind of leading me out of the jungle instead of just running away by himself, uh, that would have been pretty nice, pretty helpful for me. This guy's gonna die soon. The fact that he's not clearing this, he's gonna die so soon. Yep, there it is. Jesus, man. Yeah, that is quite unfortunate. That should be a kill, I think. He only has ult, so... Just one Q should be okay. Yeah, it's okay. I can do Rift Herald here. It's gonna be an ult on bot lane. 
I'll finish Rift Herald, then go for Dragon. I think that's the play for me right now. This is where you can see Nexus kick in. Like, I can get all those extra auto attacks off. We need to go for Dragon Check if you want to do something here. He could definitely be taking it at the moment. That should be a Death Mocturne, I think. It is. Beautiful. I'm gonna take that because it's worth so much XP to a jungler. I'm gonna have to smite that to take it because I know they won't give it to me. It's just standard practice in solo queue. Jungler get, gets more ca more XP from all of his camps. So for a scuttle especially because that camp is just worth so much experience. Like I, I need to get that. It's just not good not to get. They were not gonna push bot lane there. I mean, we're looking really, really good right now. Our team is a little susceptible to dying, just a little bit. Like, I I mean, I, I kind of have a bad death myself. What is that heal? I'd rather make mistakes than Wasn't he already out alive? Yeah. Whatever. But I'm the only AP on my team right now, so the fact that I'm, like, doing okay here, we're getting a good si situation going, I'm going to be very useful in later team fights, no matter what. And that's what I was mainly looking for. Cleared. Ah, we're gonna be fine here. Let's see if this guy goes for top turret here. He does. I'm actually gonna hold my Q instead of using it right now. Let's use it right there. Place it correctly, it's fine. He's already dead anyway, so no problems. You place it a little bit further up to catch him with that. Gonna kill top turret here and then we're gonna go for his top side camps. The stage where I'm like kind of weak is definitely gone right now. Wow. I wanted to like wanted to play aggressive and then I got Swain CC'd so I couldn't ult away anymore. That sucked for me. That's probably why I'm gonna need mercs. Okay. Good pike hook. Good pike hook. Probably not gonna end well for our team here, though. Yeah. That ash arrow was very, very nice. The Swain Q coming in there was pretty bad for me. I wanted to just play aggressive and ult away, but I couldn't do that, of course. So the next item I'm gonna get is definitely mercs, because I'm gonna be in that situation more often, I think, with an ash Swain. And also Nocturne Fear, I suppose. I have my Rift Maker now, which is really, really good, though. Don't have the most kill participation, but that's fine. My team has been going for some random fights, though, I will say. We got through the early game on this champ, though. Playing it perhaps a little safe, but... If you are the only AP, that will always be fine. As long as you're not too far behind, you're going to be very, very useful in team fights. I wanted to not smite that if possible. I have to use Rift Herald there, I don't really have a choice. Get away. Get my HP back. You are literally full HP there, buddy. I would appreciate it if you would have just given that to me. Okay. We are not looking too good right now. I, I did get a, get a good bounce on Rift Earl and Jin should be able to finish that turret, I think. Yeah, he did. So that's actually good. But, uh... Scary. Good kill. Time 
No, you're going in the wrong direction. You should have walked through Aatrox, to be honest. That's whatever. Nothing I can do now. He's dead. If he walked initially, he's like straight through Aatrox right away. I think that could have been a move because I could have potentially saved him with a stun. Get his Gromp. 21 seconds on Dragon. That guy's backing. Go for Dragon here for sure. I need to focus for this. Oh, so close. I just needed to get that shield. If I got that shield, Aatrox would have been dead. Because that stun, a stun combination uh, with my Riftmaker healing would have killed Aatrox. It was a close fight there, man. Very, very close fight. But as you can see, I was able to do a lot in that team fight. And this is going to only get worse for the enemy team. Damn. That was very, very rough, though. I will get a Zonias next here. This way I can set up better stuns for myself. If I had Zonias there, the Aatrox would have been gone. It's just a matter of a split second difference there. If I get the stun on Aatrox, he's going to be CC'd for a long time. If your W is like a 2.5 second stun, 2.25 second stun. So he's going to be stunned for a long time and then the Riftmaker healing kicks in. Bonus damage to champions at 700 is good, but it's mostly the healing. The only vamp is uh, providing Echo with a lot here. Because you heal a lot based on Omni Vamp with Echo. Right now, I'm just going to make sure that I get my level in. We still end up getting Dragon, so that's really good. I'm st I'm worth 300 gold shutdown. I wasn't worth any shutdown when I died, but I got my shutdown after dying. Interesting. That's actually really good. Because that just means that uh, they didn't get anything off of that, really. Off my death there. I'm going to go Bolt here. Kill. She should have just ran to mid lane. I don't understand why she ults and then tries to clear a wave. Hmm. Okay, interesting. I, I, this is something I don't get right now. I mean, Ash is dead here. That's something I definitely understand, but... Or not, or I just don't get that last auto attack for a move speed boost. That's really sad. Damn. Okay, Swain was there to catch her, I suppose. It would have been nice if the Quinn would have just rotated with me there, because that's a pretty free play regardless for that Quinn. I guess she's just a dead Swain. Still had Flash, probably not dead then. That's fine. Oh god. Okay, thank god we have mercs, I suppose. I don't like this play now. I still had Zonias as well, but because my ult was in a good position, I just rather... I'm gonna get... I need to heal first before I do anything. You can see the healing kick in here. There we go. And we are back to full HP. This is a free dragon, free, free baron, sorry. Place a control ward on it. I will shield myself to be able to tank some damage with this. Like my team do full damage. Nocturne is not going to be here. He can't ult because this is... He doesn't have blue trinket, so he can't actually get vision. We got it. Auto attacks coming in. Asher's coming in. Like you see all those extra auto attacks I get there? They're huge. Level 16. I do. I want to get level 16 off that scuttle before I try to do anything here. 
Big. Good. Beautiful. You see those team fights right there? Like extra all the extra auto attacks I'm able to get here. Please, 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 please. Thank you. I appreciate that, Yone. Give my nice TY for that one. I have way too much gold I'm backing. I should get a death cap here. I don't finish Zonias in this specific situation because I still have a stopwatch and I can just get a death cap right now instead of that. Which is just obviously better with the amount of gold that I had right there. If my stopwatch was broken, I probably would have finished it or preferably finished it off instead of going for the death cap. Because at that point, like having the extra safety from a stopwatch for extra plays is generally better, especially since I'm worth a thousand gold. Man, where the heck is my team? Like, I guess I was too optimistic. I could dive him because of my ultimate, so I knew I was going to be able to just kind of walk up to him. I nearly killed him, but I just don't know. I, I thought my pike was going to go flank with me there, honestly, dude. That's my thought process there. My ult's a 34 second cooldown now, which is really good. But yeah, I guess I was wrong with pike's positioning. Maybe I missed something. I thought it was just gonna come from the other side of the turret while I tank turret, if that makes sense. Being killed from Yone. Do this. Being killed there as well. Just gonna auto attack him. That's all we have to do. Good. Just auto attack him, man. If, you don't, <laughs> if you're not sure what you're doing in team fight, just auto attack him. I'm actually gonna have to Zonias that. I could ult it, but I think I prefer Zoniasing it in this, situ this situation. Yeah, that's it for Echo. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please make sure to like button below. Helps me out quite a bit. If you'd like to see more videos from me in the future, hit the subscribe button as well. And see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm. Bye. Alright, so for the end game stats here. I ended up doing 27.7k damage, which is very, very good, honestly. It's not surprising that Jin outdamaged me, considering he had, like, how many more kills than me? There, He was in a lot more fights than me early game, especially. So he does get a bit more damage to me there. But I still did a really, really good amount of damage here, as you can see. Um, for true damage here, we did 4k-ish. This is mostly Riftmaker, I think. I mean, a decent chunk of Riftmaker, probably some Red Smite. But this is really, really good overall damage to objectives at 24.7k really good there and this is like the main thing about this like with rift maker i was able to heal myself for 16,000 hp which is a lot of healing honestly like this all stacks up of course echoes healing and kit and all that stuff this is really really good here that only vamp is really insane for echo passive to get a ton of healing out of it uh, for damage taken here at the most as well this is in combination with what you do here, like the high, one of the highest damage outputs in the game here, like you also with this setup are able to tank a lot because you can tank and heal everything back consistently. And when things are get, starting to get a little sketch, that's when you can press ultimate as well, of course. So we have a very high damage taken stat here by just being able to walk up, create situations for the team. And that is really good there. And for self mitigated damage, we also have 30k there as well. Gold earned at the most on my team here. Just getting the consistent farming in. My team was a little bit, just a, a smidge prone to dying in like the early-ish mid game. But yeah, it's fine. Able to get myself consistent farm based on that still. For the ruins, Conqueror healed me for 500. If you are full HP, Conqueror is obviously not going to heal you. So this definitely can um, be a little bit lower than you might expect in certain games. Revitalized bonus healing at 2100, bonus healing at 400-ish, and then some extra armor magic resist. I really like Revitalized for Echo because it helps with your W shield, but also with your overall healing. Because as you see, I had a 2100 bonus healing when it was pretty relevant. So that's a lot of extra health to have in relevant situations. And uh, yeah...